fursuits. Fuzzy animal costumes enjoyed by the furry fandom. They can take months of hard work to make, but here at Fernal Equinox 2022, we're challenging four teams to make a fursuit in under three hours. By the way, they're only allowed to use bits of scrap fur. The prized fursuit maker trophy is up for grabs for the best costume. Will they pull together reasonable semblances of fursuits, or will these go down as the ugliest fursuit parade in fandom history? Fur will fly at the Great Fursuit Makeoff. I'm your host, RK, and unfortunately, I'm also your cameraman. Our judges are Rakshana and Wolf, two experienced fursuit creators. Our teams are a mix of crafters, cosplayers, and fursuit creators, all here to prove themselves against the clock and create a wearable piece of art. Team 1 consists of Wesso and Dandy. Team 2 is Lycan Ma and Skunk Core. Team 3 is Z and Cheshi. Team 4 is Color Carnage with help from Kale and later Mars. The rules for the makeoff are quite simple. Fursuits must be made from scratch. They must only use materials provided. Tools must be down at the end of the countdown and the fursuit must be on their model. Contestants must stay safe around the hot glue and sharp objects and adhere to the convention's code of conduct. The minimum required is one fursuit head and one accessory, like paws or a tail. Each team gets to start off with a fresh roll of duct tape, clear tape, painter's coveralls, glue sticks, sewing needles, and thread. They are allowed to bring their own tools. Team Color Carnage even brought a sewing machine, which may give them a competitive edge. The fur and foam was donated from fursuit makers attending the convention, and at the end of the makeoff, the leftovers will be given back to the community so that they might still find use as ears, tails, stuffing, or other small crafts. Each team had the option to use a pre-made head as their base, thoughtfully donated by a community member. Team Z opts not to take the pre-made head, instead aiming for a unique design. How's your guys' concept going? Beautiful. Beautiful! Amazing. And behind us here, we have a Canada goose coming together. That's, uh, that's what all this color palette here on the floor. And behind them, a Tide Pod themed fursuit. <laughs> awesome. I like the use of blue. It seems like a lot of fursuits in blue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Blue's my favorite color, despite the purple. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I like, I'm looking forward to seeing the goose. That's why it looks like it'll be an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> we are halfway through the competition. At the halfway point, we realize we have a problem. There is no buckram or mesh to act as eye material. The creators will have to use cardboard or other materials on hand, and their models will have to walk the final fursuit parade blind. Team Color Carnage finds a stray piece of wood in the donated fur pile, adding to their creative challenge. They integrate the unusual material into their design. All our eight contestants, we have one hour left. One hour! With one hour to go, Team Skunk Core is finished early. They have decided that a fine fursuit head and matching tail are all they need to present. The head is even complete with teeth and tongue. 
What, what so far has been your greatest challenge? Uh, I think the greatest challenge is yet to come, <laughs> trying to finish this thing. And how about this team? Uh, oh, boy. We don't have enough hair really to make a body suit anymore, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you got a great head. Do you have like paws or a tail maybe? Okay, okay. okay. You, you have time for one more accessory if you think you can get a paw in. Uh, a paw. Team Wesso are the next to finish early. With not enough fur to cover the body, they are content to have a semi-full suit with all four paws and a tail. There we go. Oh, beautiful. And I'm looking fantastic. Whoa. Oh. Maybe you can... I don't know. Maybe you can see through the mouth. <laughs> Mouthless. It's, it's a style choice. You know, sacrifice the ventilation. All right, this table, what so far has been your greatest challenge? Uh, never having made a fursuit and joining 20 minutes ago. Uh, finding large enough scraps to cover areas has been my ultimate struggle. Oh, that's kind of the whole game. Yeah. And how about this team? Getting fur in my eyes. Yep, getting fur in the eye. Accurate. Team Z's wonderfully bizarre concept starts to come together and take shape. Their creature is a Canada goose but the arm is an extended neck. Somewhere in the chaos, they found a squeaker Amazing. giving extra life to this equally horrifying and delightful critter. With Team Skunk Core and Wesso finished early, we see the last minute scramble of Team's Color Carnage and Z to use every last available second in assembling their fursuits. Thank you, Mars, for stepping in last minute to be a good helper. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So here we have two teams who are already done and already cleaned up their workstation. And over here we have two teams frantically scrambling and gluing and cutting to finish their creations. Your best is good enough. This is so amazing, guys. I am so incredibly pleased with the amazing hard work that our, that our four teams have done. So if you just stand back in front of your table, we're gonna like chit chat with each and every one of you. The time is up and the fursuit parade is underway. The teams pose for photos. This was uh, much always supposed to be much closer to um, nailed it than, than British Bake Off. <laughs> And you guys nailed it. Good job. Round of applause. OK. All right, you guys finished last. You were right down to the wire. So like, you, you were the bonus guy. You came in kind of late. Explain your process. Who's your character? This is Princess Fireflame, super edgy scene girl. Uh, she, her eyes change color when she's angry. <laughs> Uh, but no, I just uh, try to have fun. Uh, uh, and this is the best so thing good. We could do. It's so good. 
That's amazing. Was there anything about the process that was like challenging or interesting or easier than you expected? Uh, uh, including the block of wood was certainly a challenge, but we made it work. Oh, that's right. Yes, there was a random piece of scrap wood Can you get that is now the horn. Uh, I'm going to start on the side again. So I got to say, I uh, love your use of the colors. Go to the main color card. I do, I do see you lost an eye. So. Oh. <laughs> it was a choice. It was a choice. Oh, stupid one's own eyeball. Uh, yeah, she definitely is edgy, so really she's trying to care for And I gotta say, the, the block of wood. I didn't think anyone would be able to do it, but not only did you incorporate it, it has been hard, and I think it's the best part. <laughs> I love it. All right. Awesome. All right, let's go to this goose. Yeah. Let's see this amazing goose. Round of applause for Color Carnage. Okay, goose. Uh, let's talk to the creative team. Who made the goose? Whose idea was the goose? And uh, what made you decide to do, uh, do this alternative style? Well, we're in Toronto, and I really wanted to do an animal that you would see here. So I was like, okay, what's what's wacky? And I said, a goose. <laughs> That's it. Hard to get into frame. Uh, do we have a name for this goose? It has a name, but we can't say it here because it's a PG. <laughs> wow! Did not expect that. It, teach, it teaches kids. It teaches kids reading in numbers like Big Bird, but will cut you if it doesn't learn it. There we have it. The nameless goose. The nameless one. Formless, nameless. <laughs> it's a squeaker. As for our little goosey friend here, uh, a little bit of a trashy, I would call him trashy. <laughs> well, he is but a goose. Honestly, so fantastic. Like, the colors and like the way you use the scraps to make it almost look like actual feathers, like pulling them off, like, that is so cool. Uh, and obviously, if you had like that or something, I'm sure you would be covered up that cool spot of skin there. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I love the hand puppet idea. Uh, I really hope that this suit in some way or another is going to be a theme for the creative floor. Uh, I'd love to see what happens. <laughs> Team three. Tell me about this fursuit, this partial you've made. We have a tail off that tail, yes. <laughs> Very good, so head and tail. Tell me about the process and uh, does it have a name? Um, we are probably naming him Krusty because uh, he looks pretty crusty. <laughs> Uh, and our inspiration was 2009 DeviantArt, as you can see. Yes. It's a sparkle dog, yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. And who doesn't love a good sparkle dog? So <laughs> true, Bestie, so true. You guys, we're very traditional with that one, too. Uh, bonus points for being the only uh, model who can actually see right now. <laughs> 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 Alright, All right, let's show us to uh, sacrifice vision for, for looks because we didn't have any eye materials. So I gotta say, I appreciate that your model oh, you're actually is actually very comfortable for a suit. Uh -huh. uh, I, and again, like, I like the color palette. Like, I think that you did really great like, with the limited resources. Wow, wow. Like, honestly. I don't know I'm talking to you, but I just... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And our final team, tell me about your process. Tell me what the name of this monster is. Hi. Uh, the, the idea was just to take as many different colors, the brightest ones possible, uh, and try to put in some like islands of cuteness on this monster with the eyes and the, the paws. Uh, and his name is Garbethem the Trash Rabbit. Alright, let's figure out a You're like, what? I can't see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fluffy nose. I like that you made it uh, go up. South Center, like the <laughs> uh, can't see, so you know, that's, that's a struggle, but you know, most persons can see anyways. Uh, I really like that you guys got paws, like I think, I know Carnage over there has one paw, you're pressed for time, <laughs> but you got little paw pads too, right? Yeah, yeah little paw pads, so awesome. Hand on the feet. Hand on the feet, wow, look at that. Uh, really liking it, yeah, like the, the hair is really nice, the piece that you got going on there, I mean, one of them's flat, one of them's not flat. <laughs> <laughs> So, I can let y'all, uh, way to sacrifice your ventilation for aesthetic, you know? <laughs> I think that's all I have to say about them. Awesome. <laughs> Give it up for our makers! <laughs> I am absolutely astounded at all four of these pieces to, that came together. I don't know how we're going to judge this, but it is, must be done because I only brought one prize. <laughs>
Deliberation is underway at the judge's table. So I gotta say, I really like the one that Carnage did, but also the blue sparkle dog, the way that they just did it and found a way to see though. Yeah. I gotta say, but also the use of wood in an unconventional way that doesn't hurt anybody. That's true, yeah. I gotta say, I've seen some, you know, seen some stuff in suits, so. <laughs> Um, the way that they use even paws in a full, essentially a full suit is yeah. ridiculous. And it, it is, I gotta, I gotta give them props. It's so hard for me to choose. The goose is so cool. They, that was such they, a creative they idea. So much. They did so much with it. So I don't like to pick things, but I have to. That's the kind of whole point of being a judge, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. I narrow it down between the goose and Carnage. Honestly, I, I like to as well. Yeah, I like the. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Like honestly, them and the sparkle dog too. Like I love, I love yes. them. But the sparkle dog too. Like that looks like a suit that you would actually see. It, at exactly. Mom, That's right? what I was thinking of. Like maybe <laughs> a slightly lower quality suit of an individual. Yeah, like someone's first time. Yeah. yeah. But it, the way that they cultivated that kind of like base shape, super well done. But man, that goose. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that goose gets me. The way that they thought outside of the box to use an arm as a yeah, you know. like puppet is just so cool. Yeah, they made it angry. Yeah, and someone showed up with only three blank heads and they were they volunteer, we don't need it. We don't need a head. We already have a concept. Which and they and they did a concept drawing. None of the other teams as far as I can tell had a concept other than gluing fur to things. They came with a plan. Alright, well what are your favorites here? What are your um, <laughs> top two. Top two. I gotta go with uh, Carnage and Wes. Is Wes the goose? Uh, no, Wes is the one on the end uh, with like the mostly done head. Um, I thought that was like, yeah, you can't see or breathe out of it. Yeah, I did really um, well, But it looks it, like a like a fursuit. It <laughs> like really it looks does. really great. From the pause to the feet, um, you got to admit. And they, he's almost completely covered. Not completely, but almost got the whole suit going. The paws are removed. Yeah, he's all four paws and a tail. And they got the tummy, and that whole and that whole head. So like, that's a lot of work. Uh, the goose is still phenomenal. It really is. But when you kind of, and not to mention, they made the feet and paws movable too. Yeah. I thought that they had just glued it on, which also kind of adds to the fact that they took extra time to figure out how to make <laughs> things work. Of sock paws, if you will. And they really adapted to the situation given to them. So I will have to say that. That is solid. I or think. What are your uh, Now after that, after I just saw him take off his sock paws, I'm gonna have to say that one in, in Carnage. Okay. So far, I think everyone is on the same page with Carnage. Yes. yes. But I, I don't <laughs> think I don't think there's there's necessarily three votes for Wes. Somehow made it a, not a hazard to have wood on a suit. Yeah, and a, you know what it is? Which like a full suit, like they got fur all over the place. They, they only really do. Off. They, they only have one paw, but you know, and for his actual suit upstairs, he is using a phone charger. So I will say the fact that he made a belt is an upgrade. <laughs> um, but no, the way that he also cultivated the character alongside just from the hair. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. Looking at the horn with the flame, you wouldn't think that it's wood, I guess. The, the well, way they carved it. It was like a solid block, like a What? Yeah, they carved <laughs> it. They fucking carved it? Yeah. No way. All right. All right. Uh, let's save the rest for, for out there, because I think we've made our decision. I think so, too. Alrighty. We want to thank all of the contestants. You guys did spectacular work. You should all be very proud of yourselves for being able to pull this off in three hours. Yeah. Uh, very pleased with everybody. But unfortunately, I only brought one prize. So there can only be one winner. And that winner is... Color Carnage! Yeah. Color Carnage! Come get your trophy! The judges were impressed with your use of fur, the horn, and your color scheme. <laughs> Congratulations, do you have any words of victory? Uh, it was a pleasure taking part of this. Uh, special shout out to my table uh, table companions, uh, Goose, and, um, and thank you for organizing. Amazing. So thank you everybody for taking part in the Great Pursuit Makeoff. I have been your host, RK. Make sure to be nice to the volunteers. Color Carnage has been crowned the Cosplay King and awarded the Maker's Trophy. Now all the teams and the audience members get to take part in the epic cleanup job. Thank you for watching The Great Fursuit Makeoff. 
I have been your host, Arke. Like and subscribe to Culture Yeft for more furry content.